Hi, I'm Jonathan Weinberg. Uh, so a few weeks ago I did a uh, review of the Lamy 2000 pen and asked whether it was worth it and I decided it was and that review seems very popular and I thought I would do another one of these reviews for with a very popular pen. This is the Pilot Custom 823. It's uh, for some people it's really sometimes like a grail pen. It's it has this wonderful translucency. Um, it's looking a bit red here because I have this beautiful Pilot. Um, what's it called? Mommy G ink in it for Valentine's Day. So that's giving it. I don't have a lot of ink in there because I, I don't want to waste it. Um, it is a vacuum filler and therefore holds quite a lot of ink and um, and and if you buy it in the United States or you buy it from a dealer in the United States only it's quite a pricey pen it's over usually over three hundred dollars if you buy it on eBay from a Japanese dealer you can get things around like a hundred dollars cheaper or so um, probably takes a while I, truth in advertising, I actually got a used version of the pen, so that's something to keep in mind. And I got a bold version because in the back of my head at some point I thought it might be cool to have the nib ground, custom ground. But, but actually I kind of really love the way the um, bold nib writes. I'm not, I'm a big medium nib person, but um, it's, it's interesting for me to, to have at least one pen, which isn't, isn't a medium or extra fine for drawing. Anyway, um, the, the, the part of this pen that I think is, should be more controversial or problematic is the vacuum filler. Um, uh, I recognize that that has advantages. Um, to it, which is that you can close the pen off, and if you're traveling on a plane, um, it won't leak. I don't do a lot of traveling. I find it, in terms of how you fill a vacuum filler, and I have several, I now have several pens that are vacuum fillers, so pen BBS, uh, a few pen BBS ones. Um, it's a little tricky filling them, and um, it, I, and you know, as I as I get more and more into my um, uh, addiction that I call it, my fountain pen addiction, and using different pens, I find that the converter by far is the better choice. It's just easier to clean, and um, you can have more control over it. And so, um, and also, um, you know, if it breaks, you can get a new one. Um, this is more. You know, this is something that really has to, uh, I mean, it hasn't broken yet, but it seems to me that it, it, it is, it has a, a, a more fragile aspect uh, of the, of the pen. Um, an advantage of the um, custom E23 is that it is fairly easy to take apart, and you actually can use the same wrench that you use for a, a Twisby. I'm not going to do that, but there are lots of, um, videos that show you how to take the pen pen apart. It has a has a gorgeous um, uh, nib uh, on it um, that is just, you know, wonderful. It, it is, I, I will do a, a, a pen um, writing sample, um, but it is un remarkably smooth. It just sort of floats along. Now here's another problem with it that you will find though uh, a lot on the on the web is that it sometimes has a kind of skipping problem when you when you write with it and the solution to that is to order an ebonite feed from the flexible nib factory which i have done it's not that expensive it's another thirty dollars per se a little more than that because you have to pay for the postage I think it costs twenty eight dollars and then there's a cost of postage um, and it seems to me crazy that you should have to pay for um, you know, for an, such an expensive pen that you should have to then get a different feed. Um, I I should say though that I have recently gotten a, um, a 743 which has the same nib and does use a converter 
and uh, and also is supposed to have some of the same problems. And I haven't really yet experienced those skipping problems, but I maybe will end up getting the ebonite feed. It works. The ebonite feed works really well. In fact, I would say at this point the pen is a little too wet. Um, you can get an ebonite feed that is that they call three, which is super wet. And then there's one that's two, and maybe it would have been better to use the two on this uh, particular pen. So when I write with it, I'm going to be using that feed because I don't want to, you know, take the whole thing apart and put the other feed in. And, uh, you know, there are other writing samples that you can see with other, other people. But I think that's something um, you should be aware of. Um, you know, I know a lot of people who, who use um, these pens and what they do in terms of the cleaning and everything is they just use it with one kind of ink color. And that's a solution because, as I say, you can take this pen completely apart. So it's better that way than um, a Pelican a M800 or a Mont Blanc 149. You need special tools and everything. This one, you don't need, you know, some incredibly obscure tool to take it apart um, to clean it. But uh, it's still somewhat of a pain in the, uh, uh, you know, neck to do it. So uh, a lot of people I know just keep one color in it. Uh, maybe you do brown to go with the beautiful amber or black. Uh, but I, that, that seems a little bit frustrating too. So is this pen worth it? Uh, I would say that it, like me if you could get it for under well under two hundred dollars which is the, what the case was yes is it worth three hundred and thirty dollars with having to get that other ebonite feet i actually don't think so i would choose the 743 uh, which also you can get in in a wider um, range of nibs this is that's another thing about this pen it comes i believe it comes in a fine a uh, soft fine, a medium, or a bold. I think that's the, all the choices that you have. While um, the other Pilot line pens that it competes with, I think within Pilot, like the 743 or the uh, 742 or the 912, they have many more choices for nibs. So that's another um, thing to consider. It's a beautiful looking pen, though, I have to say. Uh, one last thing uh, about this pen that I want to talk about. <laughs> um, so everybody, I love, well, not everybody, but a lot of people know that there is this clone out there, the Wingsung 699. This is a blue version of it. And before I got this pen, I got this pen. And I'll, I'll you know, show you it under the uh, uh, camera, too. And um, I have to say that, you know, they look very similar. But this, at least for me, was a complete piece of junk. And, there are, and I have to say there are people out there who have given it decent reviews, but it completely fell apart on me um, within three days of buying this pen. It just did not hold up. So the blue is very nice. I actually have the um, converter version of this pen um, just because I like the blue so much and it it works fine I guess but this vacuum filler is no good and that's a shame because you know Pen PBS for example they do wonderful vacuum fillers that are oh you know fifty dollars let's say this was more like thirty dollars i guess but nevertheless it was just now all i have all i have is a pen i mean i took the nib off it because it's useless it doesn't um i guess i could use it as an eyedropper somehow or other but anyway so i will do a writing sample and then i also the thing i did for valentine's day is i made a drawing a little watercolor of a cupid based on a famous raphael painting and uh, the Triumph of Galatea. And uh, so I'll do that at the very end. As always, if you like this kind of uh, review, please subscribe. Uh, it writes very, very smoothly. It's uh, broad. And this is this lovely Momuji ink. 
not a lot of flexing, but it has a kind of nice bounce because it's a gold nib. And it just writes beautifully. Remember, it has this uh, ebonite feed from the nib factory, the flexible nib factory. Um, but it, it's, very, it's very nice for broad. Oh,